Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the great Broadway musical success, Sonny, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Joe Stafford. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another big musical hit is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we'll be singing the wonderful music of Jerome Kern as we bring you one of the most memorable hits in Broadway history, Sonny. Do you remember the one girl in your life who seems like someone you'd met in a dream? Well, that's the kind of a girl Sonny was. Too beautiful to be real. A dazzling creature riding atop a snow-white horse right in the middle of the magic of a circus. One of my favorite singing partners, Joe Stafford, plays the lovely Sonny. And I'm a fellow named Tom Warren who dreams the dreams and watches the enchantment of the circus. Remember, we stop in Southampton for one night only, and this is the night. <laughs> See the half man, half woman. Sit and listen as she talks to himself. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have our one of our feature attractions, Coco the Midget. Hey, wait a minute. That's no midget. He's six feet tall. Yeah, that's the idea. He's the biggest midget in the world. <laughs> Hey, Jim, why don't we go in? An English circus ought to be worth a million laughs. Well, do we have time? Sure we have. Got a whole hour to kill before the boat sails. Come on, you American lad. Step right in. See the man with a map of North America tattooed on his chest. Every time he inhales, Mexico joins the Union. <laughs> <laughs> and see Sonny. The hey, great... wait a minute. Did you say Sonny? That's right. The greatest, the most beautiful bareback rider in the British Isles. What's her last name? You see, I just happen to know because she's my daughter. And is your name Peters? How did you know? Well, Sonny was with our outfit during the war. Sang for us behind the lines. Took care of us in the hospital. Say, it'll be a surprise for Sonny to see you. She's crazy about you American lad. Well, Tom here used to have quite a case on Sonny. Well, don't worry. I'm getting married the minute I hit New York. Well, Sonny's going to marry the bloke who owns this circus. So you two will be safe from each other. Oh, wouldn't it be great to see Sonny again? Do you remember her, fellows? Do we? Here you come a-running back into my memory's eye. Little playmate, what's my gay mate in a day gone by? Ragged dresses, tangled tresses, flying o'er the hill. Heaven bless us, you've no less a share of Jack and Jill. You funny little will, oh will. And she's granted to a tea, silly little Miss P. Sonny. She has been perfectly, she is bright and sunny. Never comb your hair, Sonny. Leave the breezes there, Sonny. Let your stockings fall down for shock. The town is all that you do. Do you ever look smiling all the while, Tom? Boy, where'd you get your smile from? Only boy, little sunny girl, be my honey girl. I'm for you. Never comb your hair, Sonny. Leave the breezes there, Sonny. Let your stockings fall down for shocking the town is all that you do. We know you're smiling all the while, Tom Boy. Where'd you get your smile from? Only one like little little sunny, sunny mind. You're a honey girl. We're all for you. Hey, 
Here she comes. Here's Sonny. Sonny. Gee, hi. Hello, fellas. Hello, Tom. Hiya, Tom boy. God, you fellas are giving me the surprise of my life. Where'd you all drop from? Well, you see, our boat sails in a little while. Oh. And so we thought we'd say hello and goodbye. As fast as that? Sonny. What's the matter? That flower in your hair. Oh, the poppy. Still my favorite flower. You remember the seeds you gave me, Sonny? I planted them back home in my place, and they've spread over the whole country. I told you they would. And I still have that poppy pillow you made. What's a poppy pillow? Well, you see, Pop, once when the hospital supplies ran out, I made some pillows and stuffed them with poppies. There's an old story that poppies make you dream especially beautiful dreams. Well, since then, all of mine have been in four colors. Come on, the rest of you lads. These two want to be alone. Okay. Let's go, fellas. Okay. I'll show you the summer flower. Only this week, he's just eaten pins and needles. He's on a diet. <laughs> well, tell me about yourself, Sonny. What's happened since I saw you last? Oh, lots and lots of things, Tom. Are you still crazy about our old gang? <laughs> that would be telling. Ah, that means there's someone, huh? Does it? Does he like you? He doesn't even know I like him. Why, a fellow always knows when a girl likes him. Are you sure of that? When a girl's in love with someone, he must be indeed a dumb one. If her secret he cannot unmask. Then if I'm in love with someone, I must wait until there'll come one boy who'll know the answer when I ask. Who stole your heart away? Who makes me dream all day? Dreams I know. Never be true. Seems as though I'll ever be blue. Who means your happiness? Who would I answer yes to? I'm so surprised and glad that you even remembered me. It was awfully nice for you to come in and say hello. Now I'm afraid I've got to say goodbye. Goodbye, Tom. Here, here, take this poppy. Let it say hello to my poppy field in America. Thank you. Goodbye, Sonny. Goodbye, Tom. sure left in a hurry. They run to catch a boat like they're running to catch a boat. Oh, Pop. My sonny, what's the matter? Nothing except... Uh... You're in love with that American, that Tom. Yes, Pop. Why don't you just try to forget him? He's going to marry a New York girl the minute he reaches the States. And I'll never see him again. Besides, the owner of the circus, Mr. Wendell Wendell, wants to marry you. Pop. Why, he's everything a young girl dreams about. He's rich, and he's, well, rich. And he's got a lot of money, and... Pop, I absolutely refuse to marry him. Now, what's wrong with Mr. Wendell Wendell? Why, his father liked him so much, he named him twice. <laughs> oh, I've got too good a memory, Pop. I remember in the hospital in France, when the fellows couldn't get to sleep at night, We'd sing to them like this. 
game, Pop. A bunch of us nurses would come into the wards and stand in the shadows and sing. The fellows would sing back. It would echo down the hospital corridors. It was all make-believe. But, Pop, I wasn't make-believing. Do you love me? get along without Tom. I'm going to get on that ship. With no ticket, no passport? I'll be a stowaway. Well, running this circus is no circus, so grab my arm, honey. We'll be a couple of stowaways. Oh, gee, my hair's all messed. I look just like a tomboy. Seems to me that's the way your old gang likes you. Well, here we go, Pop. This tomboy is going after her boy, Tom. That's the spirit. I never did give him the answer to this question. Turn to the second act of Sunny in just a moment. But first, when we go shopping, most of us take pretty much for granted the well stocked shelves of goods that are displayed so attractively. But hardly any of these goods are produced locally. They had to travel long distances, for the most part by railroad. Getting goods to you, ready for use without loss or damage, is a big job. Shipments must be made safe for transportation, and transportation must be made safe for shipment. To do this takes a lot of cooperation all along the line. It means that skilled people must pack the merchandise properly. Others must see that it is accurately addressed for delivery at the right place. Still others on shippers' loading platforms, on railroad pickup and delivery trucks, in freight stations, in yards, and on trains 
must all work together at their specialized jobs so that good products can reach you in good condition. Because everybody loses when freight is lost or damaged, this is a job for everybody who ships freight or carries it or receives it. Because it is a job for everybody, the 13 regional shippers' advisory boards and the National Association of Shippers' Advisory Boards constantly carry on a cooperative program with the railroads for the improvement of freight shipping and handling. As part of that continuing program, the month of April is set aside as perfect shipping month, a time when special attention is given to the study and application of better ways of shipping and handling freight. Here's Act Two of Jerome Kern's Sonny, starring Gordon McRae as Tom Warren and his guest Joe Stafford as Sonny. Gangplank yet? Sonny, what are you doing here? Well, the sun was just setting. I felt kind of sentimental, and I wanted to say goodnight to you again. Yeah, and I came along to chaperone the sunset. Oh, that was very sweet of you, Sonny. Here's a big hug for you. Hmm. Hmm, Tom, you make the strong man at the circus look positively anemic. Oh, must you really go? I know I'll miss you so. Why did you let me grow so used to you? It's hard to break away, my arms to take away. Say, can't you make a way to follow too? I'd simply gloat if that old boat should sail without you, dear. Why don't you stay right here? Whistle blow. And then I'll have to go lickety scat. I've got a better suggestion than that. Let's say good night till it's morning. Somehow I hate you to go. Although the hour is late, you make it easy to wait. Shadows are silently warning me to roam. So let's say good night till it's morning, and then you won't have to go. Good night. I, I mean, goodbye, Sonny. Oh, we'll, we'll just walk up the gangplank. Yeah, uh, I, I've always wanted to walk up a gangplank. Well, you'll have to be fast about it. The boat's about to sail. Cast off! Hey, get off the gangplank. Get off the gangplank. Oh, no, you're getting off the wrong end. Well, what do you know? Stowaways. <laughs> Isn't the moonlight beautiful, Tom? It's like diamonds on the water. And like shimmering gold on your hair. Oh, does this ship have to reach New York tomorrow? <laughs> Could we manage to get lost? And just keep sailing on the diamonds? Oh, I wish there was something I could do. 
When we land, they'll just take you and your father off at Ellis Island and put you back on the next ship, heading back. Well, don't worry about me. Tomorrow you'll be seeing the girl you're going to marry. What's her name? Marcia. Hmm. I figured it'd be something gooky like Marcia. <laughs> What's the name of the fellow who's in love with you? The one who owns the circus? Oh, him. Mr. Wendell Wendell. Mm-hmm. I figured it would be something gooky like Wendell Wendell. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Mr. Wendell Wendell is very... Very... Yeah, Mr. Wendell Wendell is very, very... Well, he is. <laughs> you know, maybe we ought to introduce Marcia to Wendell Wendell. Oh, I'm afraid they'd be like the two unhappy bluebirds. You remember them, Tom? In the hospital garden? Oh, I sure do, Sonny. They were the bluest bluebirds I've ever seen. Two little bluebirds love two other bluebirds. But those... lovely pair taking the air try not to care coo to each other like sister and brother but somehow they seem all alone Sonny, I... Sonny. Hello there, Tom. Oh, hi, hiya, Pop. You look pretty despondent. I don't know what's the matter. I should be happy. Tomorrow I'm going to see the girl I'm going to marry, and I've never been more miserable. You know, Sonny feels the same way. She does? Yeah. She wanted to get a look at that poppy field of yours, but the captain says she can't even get off the ship. Unless... Unless what? Unless she marries somebody, some American on board. Then he could take his wife into the country. Yeah? Yeah. I just happen to know that Sonny is very much in love with a certain American right on this ship. Though I won't mention any names. Who? Who does she love? Why don't you ask Sonny? I will. He must be a stupid guy. He doesn't even know when he's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> That's the idea. Find the guy and ball the britches off of him. I will. <laughs> Sonny? Where are you, Sonny? What do you want, Tom? There's something I want to ask you. A very important question. Who stole your heart away? Who makes you dream all day? Dreams you know can never be true. Seems as though you'll never be blue. Who means your happiness? Who would you answer yes to? Guess who? No one but you. Me? 
I thought we were just pals. Some of my best friends are my pals. Tom Warren, what a stoop. Sonny. Oh, Sonny, will you marry me? We'll get the captain to do it. And then you can come to see my poppy field and even have a dream or two on my poppy pillow. Well, first, there's one question I've got to ask you. Go ahead. Do you love me? I do. Do you mean it? I do. Do you promise to love me always? I love you forever. Forever. Mm. And ever. Mm. And not for. Stafford will be back in just a moment. And our thanks to all the members of our cast, to Lee Millar and to Earl Ross, who played Pop. Sonny, with book and lyrics by Otto Harbach and Oscar Hammerstein, and music by Jerome Kern, was dramatized for radio by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. Once again, the Red Cross asks your help that it may continue its special services devoted to the health and welfare of your community. Sixty-seven million dollars is needed to maintain these services. Sixty-seven million dollars for disaster preparedness and relief, for aid to the armed forces and veterans, for the National Blood Program, and for the many other important activities serving your community. The Red Cross brings together the millions who need help with the millions who want to help. And remember, all may help through the Red Cross, so give generously, won't you? And now here again is Joe Stafford. Thank you, Gordon. It was great fun being on the railroad hour with you again. Well, Joe, you were the loveliest, sunniest sunny since Marilyn Miller. (laughs) I sure chased you, didn't I? Well, you know the old saying, Joe, a fella runs after a girl until she catches him. Well, who are you running after next week, Gordy? (laughs) Well, next week, the celebrated mezzo-soprano of the Metropolitan Opera Company, Ira Patina, will be here to join me, Joe, in her original role in The Song of Norway. That all sounds like Krieg to me, Gordy. (laughs) But I'll be listening. Good night. And I'll be spinning around on a record with you. So long, Joe. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. Sonny has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae will soon be seen in Warner Brothers' Technicolor musical, The Daughter of Rosie O'Grady. Joe Stafford appeared through the courtesy of the Contented Hour and Club 15. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Stay tuned for baritone Leonard Warren and Voice of Firestone on NBC.